Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at uh, quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, the uh, all the links are in the show notes below the video. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff for this episode. Starting off over at uh, Computer World, Apple kicks off a public OS X beta test. Uh, Apple today followed Microsoft in opening up a pre-release or beta versions of its personal computer operating system to all comers. With little fanfare on Tuesday, Apple allowed anyone, not just registered developers, to download and install a beta version of OS 10.9.3, an update, an upcoming update to OS 10 Mavericks. So, uh, pretty interesting. Um, definitely, uh, this is something that uh, Apple's kind of following in Microsoft's footsteps. You know, Microsoft has long allowed the public. To, uh, to beta test uh, new versions of Windows. You kind of knew what you were getting way before it was actually, you know, officially available. So uh, pretty interesting uh, to see what Apple's doing there. From uh, Boy Genius Reports or BGR.com, Awesome Project Era pro Concept teases a bright future for mobile gaming. Google's Project Era, a modular smartphone that will take the smartphone universe by storm next year, and developers have already been given a glimpse at what such devices will have to offer. Module makers will be able to build a variety of smartphone components for Project Era phones, uh, with a new concept showing what a modular smartphone may bring to mobile gaming. So, pretty interesting. Um, they've got some... Uh, uh, some uh, product shots and that sort of thing. Looks looks like it has some promise. From MacMini.com, Apple has released iOS 7.1.1 update. So if you're an iPhone user, definitely uh, check it out. I have not tried it out yet on uh, my phone here, but uh, basically uh, what they're the one of the fixes among you know a whole slew of fixes is that uh, the Touch ID the fingerprint sensor, which you can see right, right here, the fingerprint sensor, uh, fingerprint recognition has been significantly improved. So it should be pretty interesting to see um, how, uh, how well that works. Also, uh, there's a bug that could impact keyboard responsiveness and uh, fixes an issue when you're using uh, Bluetooth keyboards with voiceover enabled. So, you know, among other things. From news.com.au, is this the end of Nokia? Leaked documents reveal possible Microsoft rebranding. Ah, interesting. Nokia was once the driving force of the mobile scene, but are we about to see the once mighty company disappear forever? Microsoft has been gradually completing the $7.17 billion takeover of the world's former world's largest mobile vendor, and as the final handshakes are made this month, reports suggest that the iconic Nokia name will be dropped on the history heap. So kind of sad, but at the same time, somewhat expected. Uh, enthusiast website Nokia Power User has revealed a, leak, a leaked letter from Nokia to its existing suppliers that read, please note that upon the close of the transaction between Microsoft and Nokia, the name Nokia Corporation will change to Microsoft Mobile OI. So uh, interesting, should be, uh, I'm curious to see, um, you know, if Microsoft is gonna drop Nokia altogether or what. In other Microsoft related news, uh, over at the BBC, uh, Microsoft's Cortana mixes AI with, hu with uh, human added humor. Earlier this month, Microsoft unveiled its Smart Virtual Assistant, which will work on Windows mobile smartphones and eventually across other services too. Cortana has been described as a cross between Apple Siri and predictive assistant Google Now. 
it is inspired by the Digital Guide and Microsoft's best-selling console game franchise, Halo. Microsoft's hopes Cortana will prove compelling enough to tempt smartphone users away from Android and iOS to Windows Phone, which is apparently currently a distant third in global smartphone sales. So, uh, yeah, Windows Phone is one of those things I just don't, I don't, I, 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 I just don't get it. I tried monkeying around and I just was like, I, I can't, I can't deal with this. This is way too, uh, not ahead of its time, just way too far. From uh, mobilesyrup.com, the Nest Learning Thermostat now available on Google Play for $249. Uh, Google's purchase of Nest has quickly borne fruit, at least in the distribution department, as the company uh, made the Nest Learning Thermostat available to purchase for $249 uh, on the Play Store. So if you want a Nest Thermostat, definitely go check it out. From uh, theguardian.com, the Elytro Illum camera lets users refocus blurred photos after shooting. Uh, a second version of the Lightfield camera looks and feels like a traditional camera, but may make fixed focus a thing of the past. A new camera promises to shoot living pictures by capturing the light field of an image, allowing users to refocus their photos after taking them. Uh, the, the new Illum camera resembles a normal, a normal mirrorless camera like Sony's Next cameras, but the company's new 40 mega ray light field sensor instead of the traditional camera sensor. The light field sensor captures the color intensity and direction of every light ray flowing into the camera rather than simply the color and intensity of the light hitting a traditional camera's sensor. So the result is a digital image that can be refocused after the fact using the light field information to accurately recreate the image focused on a single point and viewed in 3D or used to create custom animations potentially including those involved in virtual reality. So pretty interesting. Uh, curious to see uh, what comes of it. Should be uh, quite interesting. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.